And we got an over-under who's going in the pool. So. All right, D-Led. All right, oh, let me turn this around. They don't want me. Uh, yeah, Coach, just, uh, uh, you know, what are some of the things, uh, you know, Matt Ryan has done for the team? I know, you know, we look at the numbers and stuff, but, uh, you know, I'm sure there are things that, that, that don't really tell the story of what he's done for the team this year. Sure. There are, there's not many guys like Matt that uh, can operate at the level he does. The leadership, the real leadership that goes on behind the scenes, the way he prepares, he's the same guy every day. That, that's a huge compliment to him. He's very productive. Um, so there's a, there's a lot. You know, obviously, we wanted to get into these playoffs. We didn't. So we got to deal with the reality. And we, we got to finish this season strong. We got a big game here in Atlanta on Sunday, and that we're excited to play. Getting your your, your uh, six guys back, you know, five I guess uh, for the main roster, and then adding Hesse, um, would it be key to getting those guys work back in and, and maybe be at a little bit better strength for this game? Yeah, just you know, obviously monitor them as they get back into practice and as we implement the game plan and get through the week, and then we'll make the best decision for the 48 on Sunday. So, you know, excited to have those guys back, and we'll just see how it goes through the week. And everybody's at different spots. Like I always say, it's never never one size fits all. You know, they might have the same uh, injury or they may go on the same list. Because of COVID, doesn't mean that, that they're going to be at the same spot when they come back. Charles? Cam Jordan seems to be uh, finishing strong. He's just today mm -hmm. second NFC Defensive Player of the Week in the last three weeks and seven and a half sacks in that span. How do you guys uh, prepare for him? Yeah, he's a great player. He's been a good player in this league for a long time. Um, okay, we got a ton of respect for him. But the, the simple answer is we, we got to find ways to, to block him because he can wreck the game. And, you know, we'll do our damnedest to make sure that uh, he's accounted for in every play. Well, kind of looking over uh, the snap counts of, of the rookie class overall, I mean, how, with the last game, how have you kind of just seen this rookie class evolve over the course of this season? Well, I mean, I like those guys. I mean, they've come in here. I, 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 it's what I said. Back in August, about the mental maturity of the class still holds true. Now you've been through a whole season with them. Um, they got to continue to improve. A lot of them have. I mean, I'd argue it's not just the rookies, but a lot of guys we brought in here, the young players, have done that. And, and so as they get through this offseason, they know what to expect and they come back, but they got to go earn a job again because it's gonna, the cycle starts all over. And that's what keeps this league so competitive for coaches and players. I know a couple of weeks ago, if I'm remembering correctly, you were talking about Quadrant Allison and essentially him earning the, the extended reps that y'all were giving him. And recently, he has kind of become the steady part of the rotation. I mean, what did you see from him during that time period where he did earn that added responsibility? Well, he kept working. And um, I know it's, you think that's obvious when you got a job in the National Football League, but I've seen it go sideways for guys. You know, they. Uh, just like teams, you know, when you, if you come up short somewhere and, you know, you, you can't pack it in. And, and I give Quadra a lot of credit. You know, it wasn't easy for him to go on practice squad because, you know, in his mind, like a lot of these guys, I mean, they're, they're competing and this is what they're achieving, trying to achieve for their life's work or, or professional career. And so great, great attitude, great mindset, continued to improve. And when his number has been called on, he's been pretty productive for us. Before, like you tried to get uh, Lee Smith a couple times prior in your career or, or in previous stint in your career, you tried to get him. Now that you've had him for a full season, what, what value has he brought to this team and to the tight end room? Yeah, well, I think he's he's helped with a lot of these young guys. A lot of these veterans we brought in here, just where we're, we're at year one. Obviously, the circumstances with the salary cap. Um, you can't bring a guy in here that can't play anymore. And obviously, he can still play. I know he's a little bit older. He looks even older than he is. But uh, he's provided a lot of good wisdom to guys. And, you know, he, he, they've been through it. I think you learn a lot from your peers. Everybody's at different uh, parts of their life, and certainly their career. But uh, I think that's what changes a lot for the guys coming out of college. It's such a different dynamic. You walk in a locker room, some of these guys have families, you know, young kids. In Lee's case, he's got, he's got kids that are, you know, uh, a little bit older. So uh, a lot of wisdom. And, and it's been fun to coach him. Josh. How, 
has Felipe developed as a quarterback this year? Done a good job, and Felipe's also developed as a professional football player. I mean, he's one of the rare guys that has played special teams for us. Uh, he's a big athlete, doesn't take away from his preparation at quarterback. Uh, you know, it's a long journey for these guys, and he's been willing to do whatever he can to try to stick around and help this team. Has, have the other things he's been he's been asked to do taken away from his prep time at quarterback, or no. does it does it enhance it perhaps? Because you would hope it enhances it. You got a big, better big picture. But everybody's different. Some guys wouldn't be willing to do what Felipe's done, but he has, and it says a lot about him. I think the more understanding you have of the game, better off, you know, at any position. So, I think it's rare what he's done or attempted to do. Talent pool of athletic quarterbacks is growing. It seems every year. Do you think that folks will? take that into account in that backup role, a guy who could potentially do other things? Could be the right guy. I think a lot of people have tried. I mean, uh, obviously, the, you know, Taysom Hill, who will play this weekend, been, trust me, it hasn't been for teams lacking, trying to get that guy. It's just Taysom is right now one of one So I think when you're looking at it and you can only dress 48 guys on game day, uh, everybody values versatility. and It's hard to find, though. It really is. Uh, and I think people will continue to try to do that to answer your question about that and the natural evolution of that position and really some of these players that they're damn near positionless coming out on defense and offense. That's a good uh, transition to your test to prepare for Taysom Hill. How is that different than the first time you were facing Yeah, we expected him to play uh, last time. Obviously, he was he was uh, coming off an injury. And so Trevor started the game. But, uh, you know, the, another guy that, that – can get into the quarterback run game. It's an you know, which you got to be great on your run fits because it's, it's an extra guy you got to you got to account for. Um, and obviously, he can put the push the ball on the field on the play action game. He's a good football player. So every week there's a different different obstacle, different challenges, and that's what the fun part about coaching and preparing to, to play on Sunday. Yeah. Um, yeah, coach. At first, so the X-ray didn't show a stress fracture, but the MRI did. So I'm just checking on, on your guys. Um, so so do you, want, you want a Purple Heart? Uh, no, no. I, <laughs> because I, you came out here and played injured. Yeah, well, yeah. But, but waiting for the MRI was my point. So you tell right, us to well, wait yeah. on it. <laughs> no, so. <laughs> wait for MRI. Yeah, so we'll evaluate that. Uh, we haven't, no, we haven't ruled anybody out. Uh, we'll be smart. Yeah, uh, we'll get some of those guys hopefully back to practice. Uh, nobody we'd rule out today. Okay. So make sure we get that. I want that injury report on D-Led. <laughs> yeah, got, got a okay. PT I got to do. Okay. Well, we'll stay on you. I'll follow okay. up in the offseason. 60 lips. <laughs> All right. All right, I, yeah. Uh, Kamara, um, and, uh, you know, uh, what are some of the challenges y'all faced with him? He, and it looks like they're trying to run the ball. Um, they're not they do. Really and they can run it with the quarterback. They got different ways to – physical team they do a good job with what they you know they've evolved like I said you got to give Sean Payton a lot of credit uh, I think that's the the art of coaching is it's not going to be the same every year and you try to find ways to win games in different ways and they've certainly done that uh, it's a creative offense uh, but it, yeah I mean Kamara is a terrific football player I mean, he can hurt you in a lot of different ways obviously the traditional runs getting him out in space he's a damn good football player and uh, with um, Charles asked about Cam, but Davenport looks like he's starting to uh, find his footing in the league. They got a good D-line. D it's usually uh, most weeks in this league. Um, well coached. Those guys are, they, they play, they play, you got a lot of respect when you turn it on the tape. And Davis, Demario, I know um, he's Another good, damn good player. Yeah, there's a lot of good back. inside linebackers in this division. He's one of them. I think he's, a, he's another underrated player that, uh, I would, that's probably not as nationally known as he should be, but I, I know among his peers and coaches around his league that he's a terrific football player. Charles. Charles. I'm sure you had heard a lot uh, going into the first Saints game about this rivalry and the way fans from each city travel for this game, mm -hmm. but uh, did anything about your visit to New Orleans uh, surprise you and what's your expectation for the It surprised atmosphere? me. I, you know, we've been down to New Orleans before, obviously not in a divisional game at a different stop. Um, Fun, that was a fun atmosphere. Obviously, we're glad to get the win down there, but uh, you need the division rivalries. You know, you're going to play a team twice a year. I think it's healthy for the game. There's a lot of respect. 
on both sides. You, you want people to be excited about a game. Um, you know, look forward. Hopefully, we got a good crowd Sunday, so we can end this season right. There you go. Yeah. See you um, Coach, how has Fowler, um, you know, played for you all this year? I mean, getting down to the last game, and uh, he's one of the. You know, the guys that, you know, we're expecting to see do some things this year. Where are you all at with how he with how he's performed thus far? Well, Dante, like a lot of our guys, I mean, he's um, gives you everything he's got. He led, you know, he's a he's a tough football player. Um, been fun to get to know, get to work with him. And, you know, again, hey, we'll, we'll need him on Sunday like all of our guys. You know, of the 48 guys that dress, he'll be one of them. You know, he's a, he's a good teammate. He cares, so uh, please with Dante. And uh, lastly, um, uh, you know, uh, just got you know, looking for a Ridley update because I got no update. No, no Why? update on Cal. What's that? I mean, uh, no update on Cal for me. No, same as been every week. Thanks, guys. Thank y'all. All right. Stay out of the pool. <laughs>